I'd have somebody who used to work there kind of thing. And Erica had 200 plus pieces of clothing from Hooters. She collected them. She loved having these shirts that no one else could have. Okay. Erica, I'm just going to say it, is the most basic bitch in the world. Oh, baby, you can't call her that. And Hooters is such a late 90s thing. Yeah, Ew. it is. Ew. And, uh, the food sucks. The Ew. time or two I've been in there, I'm like, this is not cool enough to come in here for this shitty ass food and this flat beer, flat warm beer. I considered once getting a job at Hooters. I bet you did. Well, I mean, I had big boobs. Well, you still do. But, yeah, then I decided not to do that. I'm glad you didn't because it's like, it's almost basically like, gosh, I don't know. It's just, I don't think it would have been for you. Let's just leave it at that. Well, I've worked in several restaurants and people I knew who worked there were like, eh, you don't really make, it's not like you make so much money that it's worth working, you know, I mean, you can work anywhere and make well, I'm the saying, same money. Okay, look, the time or two I've and been And I guess it one. was like at the time, it was the prestige of being a Hooters girl, you uh, know, when yeah. you're like 19 or whatever. Well, then you can expect to have some middle management douche hole guy who's wanting to, you know, treat everybody like shit and get game favoritism from the cute girls or whatever. But it's I, the time or two I went in, literally a time or two, right quick, I'll say it. They come up to you almost like you're at a strip club, and you know they're just obviously, oh hey, you know, and you're just like, well, this chick's not into me, you know, but she's she's just you know playing it up, or it's almost like you're stripping the strip mentality, not stripping, but without making the extra stripper money. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, I would rather just be a stripper. What? Yeah, I'm saying it's like you do, you you go almost that far. You're you know talking this guy. You have absolutely no interest in, uh, in up and all this bullshit and staying over there and f- curling your head, flipping your hair and all this shit. Even though I didn't have any hair. Rubbing your bald head. Yeah. And um yeah, but you don't go home at the end of the night with a thousand dollars in your pocket. So fuck fuck that. You know I don't think the girls should work there. Eric and BJ began obtaining exotic pets, mostly snakes and an alligator. Photos feature the pair with various snakes, which they named Hitler and AIDS. I don't even know what that means. Hitler and AIDS? I mean, is that for shock value? Probably. That's okay. BJ also began embracing white supremacy beliefs, getting a swastika tattoo on his chest and calling himself an Aryan. Oh, wow. Thanks. That's really going to open us up to hanging out with a lot of different people. Sounds open-minded. BJ, who was a gun enthusiast, got Erica interested in guns as well. So they got Hooters apparel and merch, reptiles of various types named Hitler and AIDS, or two of their pets, and they love guns. And white supremacy. And scrapbooking. And don't forget, this makes an incredible scrapbook. (laughs) I know, right? Come down to memory lane. You can get all your scrapbooking supplies. People are complex creatures. Wow. During this time, the fireworks had fizzled between the couple. Erica would state that BJ rarely had sex with her. The need for thrills, action, continued escalating until eventually the two started burglarizing businesses around Altoona. So, like B.B. King said, the thrill is literally gone, and they're starting to do burglaries to feel alive or to put the spark back in it. That's weird. Well, I mean, I think you have to look at B.J. You don't go into the military and into special forces like being a Navy SEAL or Green Beret or like a paratrooper or something. Or Army Ranger. If you're not... Looking for adrenaline, thrills. So you're like a top A personality, kind of an alpha. And I if think you he will. naturally was one of these people who was thrill seeking and needed to feel that rush. Okay. And take and you know taking what his life had been, and then almost like clipping his balls and putting him in the suburban lifestyle where he's running a goddamn scrapbooking store. Yeah. With his wife who is probably getting on his damn nerves and having like her parents in the middle of your business all the time. Yeah. And she's running around codependent as hell. He can't get any space at all. She's zannied out all the fucking time, which I can tell you right now. I've had family members who have prescription pill problems and it's aggravating as fuck to be around someone who takes these types of pills all the time. These downer pills. Oh my fucking God. It really gets old quick. 
because they're all nodding out. They don't remember shit that happened the day before, all this bullshit. And not trying to justify what and, and, BJ and, is doing by any stretch, but I think he just needs to feel that adrenaline rush. And he just takes it further and further. And I must say, if you have a prescription pill or any substance problem, you seek help. You can do better. Sorry. Thanks for your PSA. Yeah, that's my PSA for the day. I'm Dylan, and I don't want you to do drugs. I grew up around that shit, and it gets old, is all I'm saying. I wasn't trying to, you know, look down or make fun of anyone. We get it, baby. Okay. But yeah, so uh, possibly BJ is kind of acting out, if you will. Right. Or like this. and <laughs> Like a child seeking negative attention. He's got to bring this girl with him to go do this thrill shit because she's not going to let him get within three feet outside of her damn space. I imagine she's the kind of chick that when he's in the bathroom taking a dump, she's like knocking on the door like, what are you doing in there, BJ? Can I come in? Can I smell it? Yeah. Okay. According to Erica, committing the crimes would arouse BJ. He would immediately get a hard on. Oh, fuck. Rage and erection. And he would masturbate or have sex with Erica, which was still only about once a month. So he had to go break in a place, steal some shit before he could be like, yeah, and fuck her. <laughs> wow. I'm glad I don't need that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready right now. Okay. Oh, enough. Sorry. Many of the stolen items were being sold on eBay by the couple. Erica particularly likes stealing merchandise from her favorite place, Hooters. What the fuck? So they were breaking into Hooters oh, so restaurants okay. in and around, you know, Altoona and the surrounding area. Oh, okay. The waitress tank tops were not available to the public, so Erica liked stealing those and would in turn sell them online. They, they for never quite a bit of money. And when people would buy them? Yes. No shit. During this time, Erica would claim that BJ was also cheating on her and that she had caught him at least two times, which caused her to sink into a deep depression. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's, well, that's bad for anybody, but her type of personality, their type of relationship, yeah, it's not going to go good. On Saturday, May 25th, 2002, the Seiferts loaded their Jeep Cherokee and headed for a condo in Ocean City, Maryland, where they planned to kick back and have some fun. I should also mention, I, it is my understanding that Erica's father had a hand in, like, building these condos. Oh, okay. And it was owned by a friend. Okay. So they basically just got to go have free reign for, like, 10 days at this condo. Yeah, so dad, daddy built it. He's, part, he's friends with a developer, all that. So they can just do whatever they want. BJ is drinking heavily while Erica is snorting crushed up Xanax. Basically, the entire ride to the beach town. Well, I don't know, man. If I take a Xanax, I go like to sleep for like three days. So I don't know how she's just partying down on the Xanax. They're different for everybody, I know. Ocean City, Maryland is a resort town on the Atlantic Ocean with a wooden boardwalk lined with shops, restaurants, and hotels. It's touristy. Okay. And it's kind of located where it's not very far from D.C., Baltimore, Delaware... Jersey, I mean, Pennsylvania, it's one of those beach towns that, you know, was pretty centrally located to a lot of cities and areas. Okay. So it's kind of a hot spot. Yeah, easy to get get to from multiple areas. Um, Ocean City, baby, let's go. I want to go. I've been to Ocean City. Is it nice or is it kind of touristy? It's touristy. Okay. I mean, it's nice. I think, you know, when I went, I was much younger in my 20s. And so it's fun to go someplace like that. Where there's a lot of bars and restaurants and a lot of young people. Oh, yeah, I bet. But now I think, you know, probably we're too old for that. That's where you were scouting out the Navy SEALs. No, that was at Coronado. Oh, my God. Beach. Oh, my God. How you think I got my son? Oh, my God. The revelations keep coming. Well, you know, his, his dad was training to be a SEAL. Oh, well, you know, I was training to be an elite force of one. I'm an army of one. Thank you for that. I'm black ops, baby, off the books. Look, I had a past before I met you. Yeah. And it included Navy SEALs. Well, you know what? This is your future. Tall, this six is... foot five Navy yeah. SEALs. Mm, that doesn't describe me. Who gave me beautiful children. Yeah, they did. The first place the couple goes is, can you guess? Man, fuck that shit, dude. Where, where do you think they go? To the water. To Hooters. No fucking shit. <laughs> Fucking hooters. The wings are so horrible. Oh, my God. 
Yep, they roll into town. First thing, they hit Hooters. As Does I mentioned, ha- Erica is obsessed with Hooters. She has one of the tank tops on, I bet. Probably. Acting like she used to work at one or some shit when people ask her. The pair eats, drinks, and eventually makes their way onto a transit sort of trolley shuttle bus. Okay. That's going to a nightclub called Secrets. When BJ doesn't have the exact change to make the ride, and he's kind of on the bus, slurry, drunk. I mean, it's kind of obvious to everyone on the bus that these people are fucked up. A stranger on the bus offers to cover their ticket costs. Yeah, just to make this smooth and get this guy on down the road. That stranger is 32-year-old Joshua Ford. Now, I have to point out the pun of the name of that club. It's Secrets, but it's S-E-A. Secrets. Isn't that awesome? Somebody came up with that. BJ offers to buy his new friend a drink in exchange for covering the ticket price. Eric and BJ join Josh and his girlfriend, Jeannie Crutchley, on the ride to Secrets. And from what I understand, Secrets is a coveted and popular night spot in Ocean City. It's on the water, has dance floors, tropical cocktails. Really hot spot. Well, that sounds pretty fun. The couples waited about an hour to get inside the bar. Oh, oh, fuck that. And the whole time, they're laughing, joking, taking photos... So they're kind of getting to know each other. They're, they're having fun. Okay. Which hanging that out. happens. I mean, you go out to a bar, a brewery, or you're on vacation and you happen to bump into another couple. I mean, I know I've been there before where you start to kind of make friends with these people. Yeah. You all just want to have a good time. Right. The more the merrier. Yeah. Josh Ford was a mortgage broker who had a son from a previous marriage. He had grown up mostly in Boston after moving from Cedar Rapids as a child. He had a black belt in karate. He graduated from Norfolk State University, which was a historic black college. And I thought this was fairly interesting. His brother was talking about how Josh was such a devoted and loyal friend that he wanted to go to college with his best friend. And his best friend was going to Norfolk State. So Josh did everything he could to get into Norfolk State so he could be with his friend. Oh, well, that's nice. And he was just really loyal. I mean, everyone described him as being like the best guy, such a good friend, just all around amazing dude. Sounds like a good guy. He met Jeannie, who was 19 years older, at a Christmas party in Boston in 1999. And the pair hit it off. Let's pause for a commercial break. Jeannie was a successful insurance account executive. The pair lived together in Fairfax, Virginia, which was about 175 miles away from Ocean City. In photos, Josh and Jeannie look incredibly happy. They're often seen gardening and performing home improvement projects in the photos. A lot of family and friends say the two fell into their relationship very naturally, almost seeming like an old married couple who'd just been together for decades. Yeah, so they sound happy and uh, sound like they're getting along fine. One thing everyone agreed on was that the pair were truly in love with one another. Josh and Jeannie had chosen to kick off the start of summer Memorial Day weekend in Ocean City. It was a fairly quick drive from their home, and Jeannie had planned to be back for a work meeting early Wednesday morning. So let's go have a little fun, let loose for a night or two, and get back into your life. I want to do that. At some point in the evening, Josh had phoned his brother to talk about the Celtics game. Josh was a huge Boston Celtics fan. He and Jeannie had chosen a sports bar type of restaurant called the Green Turtle so that he could catch the game before heading out to the nightclub for drinks. Oh yeah, big sports fan. Calls his brother, checks in, they talk about the basketball game, and then he's like, hey, we're going to go out and have some drinks and party. I'll talk to you later. Seemingly normal phone call. Along with the Seifritz, Josh and Jeannie were having a great time. They were soaking up the atmosphere, ordering cocktails, and dancing the night away. When last call is around the corner, the Seifritz invite their new friends to the Rainbow Condominiums where they're staying to continue partying. Yeah, well, that happens a lot. You've been having a good time. You kind of don't want it to end. Everybody's had a few drinks. Hotel, motel party. A lot of drinks. And then, yeah, it's time to go to the hotel. After party. Yeah. At this point, BJ and Erica have been drinking all day, popping pills, snorting pills. 
They're just fucked up. I don't even know how they're up on their feet, honestly. I really don't. The four arrive at the condo, and the evening goes on until... 